you probably know the feeling you have a SAP CPI system and you want to monitor and you want to figure out what are the alerts coming you want to be able to easily identify new alerts and process alerts that you already know in a much simpler way that is what the figav tool is about to do and in this video i'll show you how simple it is for you to get started set up filtering um, on managing your sap integrations so the first thing is you will go to to this page you will sign up with your email address you need to approve the the terms of service and then you'll receive an email that email you need to click and then you will get a new email and in this new email you will then get a link to a password that you can reset and here you will need to create a password for this uh, user So you will enter the password, reset password, and then you can log in with your user account. And next, first step is we need to, we can check the license, what licenses that exist on this one. And the next thing is we want to add an agent. And here on the agent, we can go in, we can select CPI system. We can select our CF development as the tenant name. We will enter our, uh, now it is Cloud Foundry um, that we're using here. Uh, uh, it's TPS. We will need to enter our uh, the host here. This is this one, and obviously without HTTPS. And then we need to add the FLM map host. Also, the place we can get this is from the deployed iFlows. What are the, the URL here? And then depending on which platform you're using, you need to select Neo or Cloud Foundry. If it's Cloud Foundry, you need to add the client secret and ID for this. This is because if we want to run tests, we need to be able to send messages with this user. For now, this is okay. We will enable monitoring and let's say that create. We obviously need to test. And we can see everything looks successful. So now we have connected to our CPI system. Next thing is we want to do is we can look at create a monitor. And the monitor is a simplified way of looking at the, the iFlows. And this will just take a little while. So we'll go into edit, we'll create a filter. And I have an iFlow that fails quite a lot. So we'll just call it failing iFlows. We can say how long time we want to look at data. We can then select if we just want to see a single iFlow. And we just want to do that in this example. So we have one here that is great failure iFlow. We can see it here. And the idea is that we can now, in here, we can see all the different uh, messages, the alerts ID, we can search for the payload, we can see what's going on in this iFlow and see what is actually happening on this. And this is obviously just an extension of the normal uh, monitor that gives you a better view about the messages, what are the applications ID, and you obviously you can search for a lot of these criteria. You can see MPL attachment and persistent messages in just the same view. Um, so it gives a really good view about what's going on. But we obviously want to find a better way to organize our failures. So we can go in here and in the manage consumers, we can create a new consumer. We will call it failed. We will just test that it works and for this it's okay. Here you can put in a 
OData filter that will then be used to filter those specific messages. So we'll say save. Yes, we want to enable the jobs and these jobs will run every five minutes. So then we can see here we have a default rule here that will run every every time we see something and let's just set it up as six, 60 minutes that means we will only see the same alert if we have not seen it within the next, uh, last 16 min uh, 60 minutes so let's see if there's any alerts here we can press pull and pull will then download all the, the different messages since it was run last and obviously if you have a lot of alerts in this it can take a long time before it has processed all the the alerts that are coming in uh, and handle them so let me just pause here for a sec so now we can see it has actually processed all of these things and here we get a good overview of the different alerts that we are getting and we can see that there is a lot of these alerts uh, I think it showed we have like 200 arrows and the idea is that you can then go in here you can say you can look at all the data about it and we know here this is a unknown host exception so we can just create a new rule host exception we will then all of these will then be run in a sequence um, so we'll just add 20, then I'll take the first one, 20, 30, 60, whatever you have created. You can specify if you only want this once every 60 minutes or something like that. Uh, you can fix... Um, update. Channels, we can spend it, send it to an email address. Um, uh, we can test what this message would look like. Let's try that. So we can see it's now been sent. And if I look at my email, we can now see I've received this email and received the attachment. That means I can actually, from my mobile phone, see what's going on in this process. So now we'll just save this and let's go back to all the alerts that's been processed and we can actually see there's also a new alert here we haven't processed before. This is uh, nobody in type payload and we can see all the details about it. Uh, no t type conversion. I think this is a, a JSON converter I'm using that does, should not be there. And now we can check the data here. We can say save. Uh, and obviously, depending on what we want and how many minutes we want, we can also add that to our rule. And that means that once we got back into our monitor, we can start polling again. And obviously, you want to fix these alerts if at all possible, um, because you don't really want them in your productive system. Um, and it, yeah, it. It will then try here and hopefully we'll get an email with some of these alerts that we have just set up. So now we can see we're getting an email that the JSON convert on missing. We're getting errors and all the information that we have here. We also can see the, the, the full error message and all the details relating to it, which means we can actually from our phone or email whenever we're checking the email we can actually see what's going on and if it is something that you want to uh, configure so the the key message is that you obviously here on the default rules could should put in your your email address uh, and set it to only send every 60 minutes uh, then you should only get the most necessary uh, errors now you have installed the figaf tool and uh, running it either you can run it here in the cloud or you can also run it in our on-premise version that's really simple also to start up so now you have just seen what we can do with monitoring there's a lot of other capabilities that we cover we, we do cover full version tracking of all your iflows and all your artifacts so if you press synchronize here it will create 
a version of it and it will then be possible to do versions of your iFlip from time to time. Uh, you can do tickets, which means that it will enable you to transport these iFlow in your landscape. You can um, set up uh, different users. So in the user, you can go in and you can then create new users for your teammates. Um, and then we have the testing capabilities. There's also a lot of functionality to be able to test your iFlows. And obviously this requires that you do a synchronization with the data. If you want to stop using the, the tool, you can just go to, to here. You can go here and, and delete the agent. Then it will no longer have the data on that specific system and it will be deleted all in, in the back end. Um, so, and if you don't want to schedule it that often, you can also just uh, disable this one, press save, and then it will not process the polling every whenever you're you're looking at it um, I hope this has been interesting and something you will try to set up and see how well it behaves with your uh, data so thanks for watching